Yo, 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 everybody. Welcome back to my intro to programming video series. Today, we will be learning about for loops. And a for loop is useful if we have a specific few lines of code that we want to repeat over and over. Instead of copying and pasting those same lines of code like a hundred times, we can use for loops to iterate those same lines of code for as many times as we want. And then when the iteration is up, it will exit the for loop and continue on in our program. So th this is a very useful tool. Um, it basically saves us a lot of typing. And once we understand the basics of for loops, I'm going to show you guys how to make a multiplication table using two for loops. So let's go ahead and jump in. By now you should know that we use file new project, so go ahead and do that to make our new uh, project. I'm going to call this intro to programming 4. Make sure console app is selected, hit OK. Alright, the blank project has been generated. Let's go ahead and jump on in. Before we start working with for loops, I need to show you guys a new type of variable called an int. And before we were working with strings, strings hold text and ints hold numbers. So let's define a new int called age. I'm going to set mine to 24 because that's how old I am. And let's go ahead and display this int to the screen, proof of concept and all that. Let's say console.writeLine, my age is age, semicolon, read line. Let's go ahead and press F5 and we should see Yep, my age is 24. So, what if we wanted to increase the age by 1? We could say age equals whatever we want, right? We could say age equals 80 and change it. But a lot of times, as programmers, we want to change variables by 1, right? We just want to add 1 or subtract 1. And luckily, there's a really concise way to do this. We can just say plus plus. So after saying age plus plus, age should now be 25. Let's control C, copy that line, control V to paste. And let's see if the age was changed. So we should see my age is now 25. We do. Cool. And that's basically the introduction to ints. You could also subtract age by using minus minus, but today we're going to use plus plus inside of our for loops. So keep that in mind. And actually, I think it's time we start using some for loops. I'm going to erase these three lines of code. And what I would like to do is display to the screen every number starting at 1 up until my age. So I would want it to say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on and so forth until it's 24. So if you think about, you know, if we didn't have access to a for loop, we would have to manually write every single line of that code. And that's really annoying. We don't want to do that. Uh, right? So let's use the for loop to make our life a lot easier. We type 4 and then an open parentheses like this. And inside the parentheses, we'll have three different lines of code. The first line, we will define a new int called i. And this is going to be our counter. This is what counts how many times we have iterated or repeated the line of code in the for loop. So int i would usually start at 0 because in programming, we like to start at 0. Most people start counting at 1, programmers start counting at 0, um, but today since we're trying to display every number up until 24 and we want to start at 1, we're going to start this counter at 1. So i equals 1. The next part is how long we want to iterate through this line of code. How many times do we want our for loop to run? We want our for loops to run while i is less than or equal to our age. So our loop will run 24 times. 
i will be one and then it will say hey is i less than or equal to 24 yes let's run the loop then at the very end of the loop it will come back to the beginning here and it will increase our counter and we want to increase our counter by one so an easy way to do that is what we just learned i plus plus Let's go underneath and add the curly brackets. Just like always, these signify the beginning and the end of the for loop. And everything inside these curly brackets is what will be repeated for however many times we specified. So let's go ahead and print some stuff to the screen. We want to print this counter. Because remember I said I want the numbers to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And that's what this counter is doing. The counter goes up one every time we do an iteration. So basically we just need to display whatever iteration we are currently on. Okay? So let's say console.write. And notice I said write and not write line. Whenever we use write line, that will start us on a brand new line. But I want all of these numbers to be in the same line. So we will just use write. I'm going to say write i plus comma. Okay, and this should display the numbers. Let's see what it does. Let's press F5. Yep, it sure does. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way up until 24. So we are repeating that same console write line 24 times. And whatever I is currently set to, we display that. Pretty straightforward. So I want to cover one other thing before we start working on that multiplication table. Remember earlier I said if i is less than or equal to age. This might have been self-explanatory, but if it wasn't, let me explain. This is an operator that we can use to compare. The one we typed here stands for less than or equal to. We could also use less than, which is just the left arrow like that. And there's also one for greater than. So what do you think the greater than symbol looks like? Take a guess. You'll probably be right. It is the other way, a arrow pointing to the right. So that's some pretty useful information to know. You can also make a greater than or equal to sign like that. You will use these four operators quite a bit when you're comparing numbers. But for now, let's go ahead and start working on the multiplication table I talked about earlier. If you guys have never seen a multiplication table, which you probably have, but if you, it's been a while, let's pull up an image of one. So this one I picked from the internet goes from 1 to 12. Be sure you notice though that we have on the horizontal axis the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 going all the way up until 12. And then on the vertical axis we also have the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 going up to 12. And this is why we need two different for loops. We need one for loop representing the 1 through 12 on this side on the vertical axis. And then we need another for loop inside of that one, representing the horizontal axis that's moving up. So basically, think of it like this. Our first for loop will start at 1. And then we will go into our second for loop. That will be the horizontal axis. And it will go 1, 2, 3, 4. And for each iteration inside the second for loop, we will multiply the counter of the second for loop with the first for loop. Okay? So while the first for loop is 1, we would say 1 times 1, 1 times 2, 1 times 3, 1 times 4, right? All the way up until 12. After 12 has been executed, our first for loop will go to 2, and then we repeat the process 2 times 1, 2 times 2, 2 times 3, and then printing the result from that multiplication onto the screen. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to erase this for loop and this int. And to make things more interesting, let's let the user define how big he or she wants the table to be. So first, let's display some text to the screen. What should this multiplication table go up to? And then we will read the input 
from the user, and we will store it inside an int. Similar to last time, rem remember we stored a string, except this time we're getting an error. See that red squiggly line underneath? Let's see what the error list is saying. Cannot implicitly convert type string to int. So basically, Visual Studio is telling us that the result from this read line function, it is a string. See? And a string is not compatible with an int. Remember, strings are text and ints are numbers, so they're totally different data types. But luckily for us, there's a handy dandy convert function we can use to convert strings to ints. So let's go ahead and do that. I do want to say one thing though, there is a red flag. If you start our program and type in letters and try to convert those letters to a number, our program will crash. So I know there's some people out there that want to, you know, push the boundaries and <laughs> type in some letters and see what happens. Um, it's going to crash the program. There is a way to error check for that and fix it, but I don't feel like we should be covering that today. So let's go ahead and say convert dot to int. 32 and we're going to pass in the console read line function as a parameter to this convert function so do an open parentheses and then a close parentheses after the read line function is called and the error has gone away so now we can begin using our for loops because we know how big this table should actually be for the sake of the example let's pretend that number is always 12 because we're trying to mimic that table I showed you that goes up to 12. All right, so now we can start the first for loop. For int i equals 1, because we want to start counting at 1 this time. And then we want this for loop to run for as long as i is less than or equal to the number that was typed in, 12. So now i will start at 1 and go all the way up until 12 put a semicolon and after each iteration of our for loop we want to increase our counter by one so I plus plus curly brackets and then inside this for loop we want to start another for loop that goes up from 1 to 12 and we will multiply the counter of the second for loop with I so let's do another for int J because it needs to be named something else Otherwise, Visual Studio will be confused. We'll say int j equals 1. And we want to run this loop for as long as j is less than or equal to number 12. And then j plus plus. And then inside this for loop, we want to basically multiply j times i to get the value we should display to the screen. So let's say console.write i times j plus comma. Now remember, when we call write, it prints all the numbers on the same line. But that's going to be a little bit of a mess because we want to start a new line after each row is finished. So after we do, you know, 1 times 1, 1 times 2, all the way up until 1 times 12, we want to start 2 times 1 on a new line. So we can do that by just printing an empty line outside of the second for loop. So we'll say console.write line, nothing, <laughs> just empty quotations. And that should do something for us. Let's go ahead and press F5. What should the table go up to? 12? Yeah, look at that. That's looking pretty nice, isn't it? That is the correct results. Let's go ahead and exit. And just to explain one more time, if you guys are a little confused, let's explain what we're doing here. So we have the first for loop that represents the vertical axis of 1 through 12. While i is 1, we're going to iterate through the second for loop, and the second for loop will continue all the way until 12, then this loop will be exited, we'll write an empty line 
i will be increased to two and we repeat the process so i will be two and then we'll say two times one two times two two times three two times four all the way up until twelve second for loop will be exited then i turns into three then we do three times one three times two three times three all the way up until twelve and this is repeated until i is equal to twelve and then after that iteration we, everything is done we exit and do the final read line call so that's all i have for you guys today i think this was a pretty good exercise with for loops we will learn about different types of loops in the next episode so I hope to see you guys there.